Set up the kicks with your hands, okay? He hates your hand. Our little baby's all grows up. You know what? Shut up. Come on. No, no. Our little baby's all grows up. You have to. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girl, welcome to the BD Energy MMA channel where smarks get their smark on and freaks go elsewhere. So, rules of cage slash rope evasion. This goes back to an old Roy Jones Jr. Um, a piece of advice that I kind of gave to everyone years back. But hands up outside of the shoulders, like postured out. Lateral change of direction is always aided by proximity of feet. So if they're closer, your directional change will be more hasty and more unpredictable. And thirdly, just to be unpredictable as far as your direction. Because you don't want your back against the cage. So, some of the, um, the examples I'm going to use from yesteryear in an MMA context when someone's back is to the fence would be Mighty Mouse versus uh, Ian McCall in their second fight, and then Stipe Miocic versus, versus Verdum in their only fight for the, uh, I think that's Stipe's title win. Um, either way, both of them had said posture moving um, away from the power side, so to their own right. And that allowed both of them to do a quick sit on the right foot, meaning they're moving to the right, and they put a hard plant on on the right side with the right foot to throw a right hand. It's a quick sit right hand, um, just so you're familiar with my nomenclature if you're new. So essentially, what we saw uh, Saturday night was uh, you know a striking chess match, if you will, between um, Fazeev and Brad Riddell. And Fazeev just to me computes a little bit faster and has better better footwork and agility and it kind of came down to that and, and a really good read he made after the fight he actually said something along the lines of he has trouble when he's retreating uh defending spinning attacks and he didn't get too much in detail and i think that was more of a language barrier than um uh, you know a philosophy that was incomplete i think he knew exactly what he was doing and furthermore there was in between i think it was the first and the second round in his corner they were almost like reminding him of his own advice to to keep Riddell in the corner. So it's almost like they had this this kind of attack planned. He hates your hands, okay? Go okay. the feints, he's biting on it. When you get him against the cage, use your technique and corner him, okay? One thing he was doing on Riddell's exchange was trying to land like a left hook or a left body kick, but he wasn't catching him the way he wanted to, not enough to put anyone to sleep, certainly, but there was a lot of Riddell moving backward to his right with his hands down, which is a major no-no, especially someone that's such a high-level striking coach, or was anyway. Um, I, I don't know if he's still you know, actively working, but Fazeev took his job from as striking coach at Tiger Muay Thai, for those of you that don't know, and they've got just, just a bunch of monsters over there, uh, coaches and fighters. Uh, Peter Yan, obviously, or Piotr Yan. And then the Hickman brothers, what they're doing with the wrestling over there. Well, just MMA in general. And then uh, Fazeev teaching striking. And then you just have you have an insane amount of, of unbelievable talent over there. Anywho, I don't want to ramble too much. We'll get to the technique part of things. And it's going to be all in flashes. But I just wanted to show you, firstly, DJ moving, retreating to his right, landing that beautiful right hand on Ian McCall. That, these are proper, right? Steve Miocic doing the same thing with his hands up a little away from your body and then landing that right hand. Now the purpose of this, right, and the, per the reason that Roy did it as well, is when someone is moving laterally, especially with their back against a rope or a cage, there's only so many options on round strikes, but linear strikes are very hard to land. So when you throw like a left hook at someone retreating against the cage, they could duck under it, but it's a little risky in MMA because you could throw anything behind it, a, you know, a nine or, or a lead left round kick. Um, so you could spin with your right foot, which is what Fazeev did, although he, he kind of did more of a, like a twitch feint before he threw it. And it was magical, beautiful stuff from him. Um, but it was a hook kick. It wasn't like a wheel kick where he locked out and sold out. He kind of looked like he was on the fly so he was setting that up pretty much from middle second round all the way on and I'll show you a few examples of that and then obviously how it came into fruition at the end um, so I hope you enjoy uh, just keep in mind defensively your hands are up you want your elbows probably where like your nipples are a little higher than normal in your and out you don't want your hands like on your head you want them out as detractors 
right? You gotta figure, if something's moving laterally from you and you're a stationary target and you're trying to shoot it, it is so much harder to try to get, like, say, center of mass than it is if something's moving forward and backward. Now, when someone's against a cage and or a rope, everything becomes exacerbated because you, you can't move backward. You can't pull on a three or a left hook. It's not not really an option, especially on a fence. In boxing, some may argue that you could uh, with loose ropes, etc. But you don't have too many options. So you always, when you're trying to escape, because you usually want to, you want to keep your kind of elbows up. I would say on me, I'm doing it right now, like, yeah, right around where n your nipples are, but your, your hands out, say a good, f yeah, almost a foot from your face in that kind of a posture. They don't have to be stagnant because you want to be agile, right? You want to, like, watch Wonder Boy, too. He's another good example of someone that's agile with his hopping back and forth. And I hope you learned something from this. As always, I have um, links to my Patreon and uh, PayPal uh, underneath in the description. And BDMMA Club, of course, uh, here. And anyone that wants to make, make a donation. I'm going to try to set up a little uh, tip jar. Um, they were that was like an experimental thing on youtube as well so any anyone that can help anyway um i'm back on track this week with everything so i'll i should be filming some some video things uh fairly soon and i might just kind of start another channel where i i go off topic do the podcasting thing um i'll do a podcast here that's like like technically you know about technique and then I'm, I'm going to do more of a, uh, like the Hamzat video that I've been working on. I'm going to, I'm going to probably put that on, on another channel just cause I don't want an inconsistent audience. Cause the thing I've struggled with the most over the years isn't recognition or quality of work complaints. It's more so just finding an audience and honing in besides the obvious fans of, you know, the Dagestani style of grappling. They, they've certainly navigated to my channel, but otherwise it's very inconsistent. And me being Irish American, I mean, I speak Spanish. I don't, I don't know well enough to do a whole breakdown, but anywho, it, it's just it's the hardest thing about this game is, is finding your audience. So, with that said, all of that, um, hopefully, you learned something from this. Hands up and out, and exploitation, right? It, one of the things I always try to point out to people because I think when you're when you start out sparring, one of the major problems is not not landing and, and getting frustrated. And, someone's jabbing your face off and you're like what am i doing wrong it's just that your your defense needs work for one and it, to not be so stifled and frustrated and getting exhausted just thinking and the other thing is obviously experience blah 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 but y you have to see openings and that's only going to come with said experience so that's about all i got on the rant beautiful work by uh fazeev on the spin wheel kick knockout i mean two major major striker strikers here and uh yeah, we've seen it, you know, we've seen it done right in the, in the form of Mighty Mouse and Stipe. And we've seen it done wrong in the form of Riddell. And that, I like the guy a lot. I love his team. I love what they represent. But he got caught by, uh, by the better guy. And it is what it is. Uh, Fazeev knowing Vince Vaughn is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. So we're going to close with that. I don't know if you picked up on the subtlety of swingers. But uh, let's check it. All right. Cheers. Vince Vaughn, you want to fight Vince Vaughn? Yeah, I love him. You know my problem. Oh, God. Jesus Christ, that's what I Our little boy is all grown up tonight. You know what, big boy? You're grown up. What on a call up? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. You're grown up. Yeah, I dig that. Raphael Fazeev. And we can ask Vince Man. Vaughn. Looks up and you're grown up. He's Ooh. down. Yeah. Vince I'm the asshole in the box. Place, right? I'm the asshole. I'm out of here. I'm not eating anything. I wouldn't eat here. I would never eat here anyway.